It's something from the true wild that I'm going to share with you tonight. And it's something really precious to me. It was actually named Precious after the people who brought you Gollum and Lord of the Rings uh, when I went to New Zealand uh, last year. And it is our common ancestor. This seemingly uh, funny lump of ironic stony material with these little laminations is a stromatolite from Western Australia. And it is precious because it's some of the last remaining evidence of our earliest ancestry. It's three billion years old. It, uh, the laminations that you see are microbial map community that lived on the shore of a lake, a lake in which the sky would have been orange pink, no atmosphere, atmospheric oxygen, free oxygen. Uh, still a lot of cooling, a lot of volcanism, and a lot of meteorites flashing in the sky. Very young Earth. And it's just a beautiful thing to hold. It, it has a gravitas to it, because it is our common ancestor. These are the organisms that, over f almost four billion years, cleaned our atmosphere, they oxygenated it, and they created the soils and the basis for fungi, plants, and animals. Mm -hmm. So we owe a lot to these fellas. Uh, thank you. <laughs> so I'm going to have Precious the Stromatolite join us here. So. I'm going to take you on a journey tonight back to the first questions about, in science, about how life began. And this actually began in an innocuous letter by Charles Darwin to his friend J.B. Hooker in 1871. And you've all heard this, this idea of life beginning in some warm little pond somewhere. But it's actually the second part of the sentence that gives us a clue for the 21st century that a protein compound was chemically formed ready to undergo still more complex changes. But Darwin actually nailed it in 1871, this visionary man, that you have to form a stringy polymer called a protein and you have to get it longer and longer and longer. We've discovered a way to do that. It's just a case of weird science. Leading American scientists